everyone, this is Keith here, and today I'm reviewing the Steam Controller. Now, there's going to be multiple segments in this review. The first segment is going to be me showing you guys what came included with the box. The uh, second segment is going to be me showing you guys a tour of the controller and showing you guys the functions of the buttons and uh, telling you guys about some features I found unique. Um, and the third segment is going to be me uh, showing you guys the controller performing in a variety of games. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, enjoy the video. Okay, so this is uh, everything that the controller came included with, at least for me. Um, you have the controller itself, you have a uh, micro USB cable, although I would like to note that um, according to the uh, product page for the Steam controller, if you go to the uh, Steam store and under hardware and then click on Steam controller, uh, Valve is saying under the uh, product description that, the, uh, that a micro USB cable is not included with the Steam controller which is weird because I got one with mine so I'm assuming that the newer batches of Steam controllers that come out um, the ones that are supposed to ship out in December will not include micro USB cables so that's sort of a shame um, I measure this cable to be about 4.8 feet you know close to 5 feet um, and that's a good length you know I don't really need that much length because you know I do sit on my desk when I play PC games and my PC is right under my desk so you know I don't really need that much length but it is nice having that in case you're uh, fairly far away from your desk or if you just want to sort of move your chair back um, you have a uh, dongle here, a USB dongle this is for pairing your uh, controller up with your PC wirelessly um, and then you have a stand here for the dongle in case you don't want a sort of dongle jutting out of your PC uh, maybe you don't like the way it looks or maybe you have children running around and your PC is kind of exposed and you don't want them to sort of run by this and sort of snap it off um, you can just sort of plug it into the dongle. You see here, it plugs in right up there. Um, and then you use the micro USB cable, plug the micro end into here, and then the USB end into your PC. And then you can use it, the uh, dongle like that if you prefer. Um, if you want to use the controller wirelessly, you uh, have to use the uh, AA batteries. Um, you have to use AA batteries. Uh, the controller comes included with uh, Duracell brand AA's. Uh, Duracell is a good brand, you know. It's glad to see. I'm glad to see that Valve doesn't uh, sort of skimp you and give you uh, cheap generic branded batteries. You do get really good name brand ones. Valve claims that you can get 80 hours of game time with the included batteries uh, before um, they're depleted. That's kind of a bold statement. Um, I haven't really uh, played long enough in wireless mode to sort of see if uh, that claim holds any water. Uh, but it does seem like the controller does have really good battery life um, so yeah uh, and note that Duracell batteries are optional they're only for if you want to use the controller wirelessly uh, you can take the uh, a micro USB cable any micro USB cable should work like maybe you have one laying around an extra for your phone or whatever and you can plug it into the top here top of the controller and then you run the USB end into your PC or steam machine or whatever you have um, and uh, that will pair the uh, controller up to your computer and then you can use it as a wired controller that is primarily what I use it for however for the sake of this review I'm going to be using the controller in wireless mode just to sort of give you guys an idea of the latency and uh, stuff like that and then of course we have the stuff that nobody cares about like this quick start guide which just tells you how to put the batteries in and then it tells you how to connect a dongle and how to turn the controller on and all that stuff um, and then you get a product guide which is just sort of warnings and legality things uh, yeah just different languages so that's neat but yeah no one really cares about that stuff um, anyway yeah that is uh, I just wanted to show you guys what came included with uh, the controller um, so yeah eh, I get once I get this stuff out of frame here I'm gonna sort of move the controller here and then we can take a look at the controller itself yeah, so now it's time to uh, take a look at the controller itself um, the first thing I want to talk about is the weight of the controller. It, uh, it's not quite as heavy as in Xbox 360 controller, but uh, it's not much lighter either. Maybe a couple ounces lighter. Uh, I don't think the controller is uh, too light. I think it has a good bit of weight to it. You know, it's not too heavy, not too light. I really like it. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is sort of the awkwardness I experienced with the controller. Um, I noticed that playing the controller with my index fingers for the bumpers and my middle finger for the triggers and my uh, ring fingers for the handle buttons or uh, grip buttons, whichever you prefer to call them. Um, that led to a bit of soreness because I'd be playing a game and you know the uh, 
buttons down here would be mapped for reloading and jump so I'd be mashing those buttons a lot and I noticed that specifically in my right hand I got a little bit of soreness down there um, switching switching to holding control like this fixed that problem um, but you know the problem with that is now I have to sort of flick my finger back and forth but you know this is sort of how you stand your play with a gamepad um, and then you know, I'd use my middle for the uh, grip buttons down here that did sort of alleviate some of the pain that I had in those fingers um, not really a downside just a sort of caveat I thought I would mention um, another thing I uh, find awkward and a lot of people have uh, argued with me about this, or not necessarily argued, but disagreed with me on this. I find the placement of the X, Y, B, A buttons to be a little awkward. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's they're too small or what the exact problem is. But when I'd be playing a game and I need to quickly sort of s switch to the buttons and tap them, I would find myself either tapping uh, them two buttons at once when I mean to only hit one, or I just sort of miss a button and just sort of flick off it. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why that happens. I, the, the placement's just awkward for me. Um, I have sort of adapted to it, and lately I've been sort of catching myself and do a little bit better with this controller. And even in fighting games, I find myself hitting buttons much more comfortably and precisely. Um, but there are still a lot of sort of uh, scenarios where I accidentally hit the wrong button. Um, that is still quite common. Um, so yeah, you know, maybe they could sort of do a revision where they sort of figure this out. I, I don't know. Um, and next to the XYBA buttons is an analog stick. I would say that the analog stick is very close to the PS4s and look and feel. If I sort of show you guys the analog stick here, it sort of has that same sort of textured surface and um, it has a sort of pop out uh, style to it where the Xbox 360s is sort of a caved in design. Um, some people prefer the cave-in, some people prefer the pop-out, it's just a silly preference. Um, there's also sort of a ring around the analog stick. I don't really have any complaints with the analog stick, I mean it works, it, you know, just a basic analog stick. It's kind of small, but, you know, um, I think the PS4 is about this size too, maybe slightly bigger. You have a start and select button right here, you know, standard start and select buttons, really, they do whatever the heck you have them designed to do. And then you have a sort of Steam logo in the middle, which acts as the uh, overlay button. So when you're playing a game, you know, you're in big picture mode, you can sort of hit that button and that'll bring up the Steam overlay. And then you can do things like uh, web browse while in game or, um, you know, message your Steam friends and stuff like that. I will get into typing with this controller because it has a very unique way for typing and I really like it. But we'll get into that once I, uh, in the second segment of this video. Uh, so, yeah. Um, these are the trackpads. These are the things that your eyes are immediately drawn to once you see this controller because they do take up a lot of controller space. And, uh, you know, these big, black, soulless eyes, or pepperonis as I like to call them. Excuse me. Um, but anyway, yeah, the right trackpad has a sort of uh, rough surface to it. It's not entirely smooth. If you ever felt a trackpad on a uh, modern laptop, it's kind of like that, although I'd say it's actually got a little bit more traction to it, in my opinion. Um, this isn't a negative thing. I actually like how there's a little bit of traction when I move my thumb across. This sort of gives a better uh, uh, sense, you know, a better feeling, a better feedback, I guess you could say, that I'm moving my uh, finger across the trackpad. Um, the only complaint I have about the right trackpad, and this, this is kind of a minor issue that I've been experiencing, is that uh, moving to the right, all the way to the right edge here, if I'm holding it like this, like standard game style, um, if I sort of relax, it isn't much of a problem, but if I'm sort of holding it like this, sort of gripping it tightly a little bit, um, I do notice that there's a little bit of strain when I uh, move my right thumb to the sort of edge of the right trackpad. There's a little bit of straining right here that I feel, and I find that after, like, if I'm doing quick swipes, it sort of gets sore after a little bit, my thumb does. Um, and I find that moving my thumb to the bottom of the trackpad, no matter in just about any position, it is really awkward. Um, so if I sort of like, if you see here, if I sort of move my thumb to the, um, sort of try to go to the edge of the bottom right trackpad, I don't even make it before my thumb stops, and I sort of have to force my thumb uh, to go down to the rest of the way. Um, that's really awkward, and I really dislike that. Although, to be fair, most games don't have you where you really need to aim all the way down, you know what I mean? Most of them don't have, most FPSs I know don't really have that much of verticality involved and mostly stick, you know aiming on a horizontal plane. Um, 
but yeah, that but still though, that is pretty awkward. I mean, you mostly do swipes anyway. You're not really supposed to sort of continuously aim with this thing. You're mostly supposed to do quick swipes, or at least that's what works best for me. But I still find still find that that is a uh, complaint worth mentioning. Um, and for the left trackpad, uh, the surface of the left trackpad is actually a lot more smooth. If I sort of drag my finger across it, it doesn't have any of the roughness that the right trackpad does. Um, the left trackpad does have this sort of uh, cross design engraved into it, and I guess this is here so that when you're moving your thumb across the trackpad, you sort of have a, a good idea of where your thumb is relative to the actual pad surface. So that's a neat addition. Uh, both the trackpads are clickable. Hear that? You got a nice clicking noise going on. So that's neat. And the left stick is clickable as well. So, oh yeah, this controller really likes to click. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, and the uh, trackpads also have uh, haptic feedback, which is a pretty unique thing, um, and that's basically this sort of uh, sensitive, this sort of um, vibration or this sort of rumble that uh, you can feel on your thumbs um, as you sort of slide your thumb to the uh, closer to the edges of the trackpad. The uh, vibration sort of intensifies. Um, you can go into option menu and disable haptic feedback individually for each. Uh, trackpad so you know if you don't want it on the left but one on the right you can do that or if you just want them both set to low or medium or whatever you can do that um, moving up to the top of the controller you have a left bumper a right bumper a left trigger and right trigger these uh, trigger buttons are two-staged so you can sort of squeeze them and also sort of squeeze all the way down to actually press them um, and what's cool is in the uh, configuration menu for the controller you can actually uh, set different functions for when you lightly press the uh, uh, triggers and then fully press them down. Um, like I saw someone who was playing this controller with Battlefield 4 and he had it assigned to where when he would lightly press it it would aim down his sights and when he would click it it would then start to shoot so that was pretty neat. Um, yeah the bumpers are sort of standard bumpers you know nothing really much to say about them. Um, and then on the back of the controller here you have the Steam logo in the middle and you have these two uh, grip buttons or uh, handle buttons whichever you prefer to call it and these are actually really neat buttons because what these are great because you can um, actually re do functions like jump or reload without having to move your uh, fingers off of the um, trackpads so you could be you know moving with the trackpads aiming and stuff like that and then you know oh crap I gotta reload bam and you see here it didn't really change my uh, aiming at all or my sort of activity out of the left thumb and that's really really nice because that's always sort of a thing you struggle with with gamepad controllers like the playstation and stuff you gotta go oh crap reload you know stuff like that um, so it is neat that they sort of found a solution to it and in the bottom of the controller here you have this little slider where you slide this across the uh, back oh crap ah, the back sort of pops out right there and then you get access to the uh, back of the controller um, and this is where the batteries go on the left sides here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the batteries now just to show you guys. Uh, it is important to note that the batteries go in positive side down. Of course, it does also tell you that. Um, and you sort of just stick them in here. And uh, yeah, to uh, eject the batteries, you see here this arrow points towards this little tab. Once you put the batteries in, this tab pops out. And you just push that in. And then the batteries come flying out. So yeah, that's a bit of uh, nice ingenuity they got going on there. There you go. So yeah. yeah and then once you have the uh, batteries inserted, just take the, uh, take the uh, let me sort of show you guys the back plate here. You have these two notches. You put that in this spot here and just do that until you get this nice little click um, and yeah and then batteries are sort of, the batteries don't really add a whole lot of weight to them um, it does add sort of a little bit but not really that much noticeable in my opinion and once you have the batteries in you then take the dongle connect it into your PC and then hit the middle button and as you uh, I don't know if you heard that but you get this nice little audible beep when your uh, controller is synced up with your PC um, and also the middle button lights up um, it looks a bit brighter on my webcam than it actually is. It's actually a nice subtle light um, in real life um, and that on this crappy webcam. Um, so yeah, now you're ready to start using your controller. It's simple as that. You don't have to sort of hold it 
and then go to some application and wait for the controller to sync up. It just automatically does it. Um, you know, no complications. Now the controller has a built-in gyroscope and accelerometer and what this means is that you can tilt the controller to perform a variety of functions. For instance, um, say you, uh, you're playing a racing game and you want to uh, steer your vehicle with the uh, controller, you can uh, set you know, the tilt uh, function to do that, you know, uh, just sort of do this and your vehicle will turn and stuff. Um, and you can also, if you're playing a first person sh shooter, you could also map the uh, controller's gyroscope for functions like aiming so that way when you're aiming with the trackpad you can sort of move the controller to make subtle adjustments um, to your aiming or you know maybe you can map a uh, you can set the sensitivity of uh, the movement before the action is performed so say for example if you want to map it to reload you can set the sensitivity real high to where you have to shake it real violently to get a uh, to get the function to perform so that's pretty uh, interesting feature um, I do use it sometimes when like like if these back ones are being used and I want to map or load or jump or something to something, I'll just, you know, map it to flicking the controller. Um, yeah, I don't really use the feature a whole lot, but I do find that it could be useful in certain circumstances. Um, anyway, yeah, it's time to uh, hook the controller up, sync it up, and run it in big picture mode. Okay, so here we are in Steam big picture mode. Now, this is my first gripe with the Steam controller, and uh, that is... Um, unless you're in uh, Steam's big picture mode, you really can't configure the controller or do anything with it. Um, that sucks. I do wish Valve would release a sort of separate desktop utility that's not really tied to Steam. Um, so that way you could uh, configure the controller there and uh, sort of use the extensive features um, without having to launch uh, Steam big picture. But uh, yeah, anyway, here's big picture mode. Um, you have access to the store, your games library, and the community page. If you've ever used Steam, you know what these are. Um, and I was actually really surprised with how uh, well things work. Um, like, I was kind of worried how typing would work. But after sort of, um, you see here, you just hit RB to open the uh, friends panel. But yeah, after sort of uh, going to type someone, I noticed that it has a really good interface. And it's fairly intuitive. Like, um, for instance, like, see here, this is the uh, on-screen keyboard. And um, you see the left trackpad controls the uh, pointer on the uh, left side and the right on the right. Um, and you can just, you know, uh, I could say, oh wow, I messed that up horribly. There we go. Yeah, so, you know, it's very uh, snappy and very quick typing like this. Um, after using it for about two minutes, I immediately uh, got used to it and find myself being able to type at a moderately fast pace. Um, it's definitely not as fast as I would type with my keyboard, but you know it's still considerably faster than typing with a controller. Um, web browsing is a similar experience. It, I find it very snappy and uh, very quick. Uh, so you see here, when you first open it, it does this pa panel here. Um, and of course, you go to uh, the uh, web panel with LB, and then you click on, so you're going to click on Google here, and then you just sort of use the right trackpad, move the accuser, and then you know, type in whatever you want. And there you go. Uh, it's that quick. Um, it's incredibly snappy and it just works very, very well. I really think Valve did a fantastic job with the on screen keyboard and just the general navigation of uh, Steam Big Picture Mode. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and click on this gear up here. Now, you depending on uh, if you notice your controller is uh, a little wonky, you may want to go under the uh, controller section and the add slash test. You may want to uh, do that, and then you see here you have. Go down to detected controllers and you can do things like identify it. it gives it a nice little beep. You can hit X to um, calibrate it. Or uh, you could hit Y to sort of screw around with the controller and test to make sure everything works properly. Um, so yeah, that could be good if your uh, controller is acting a little funny and uh, you sort of want to uh, debug it and see what's uh, causing any issues. Um, and you also have the uh, battery indicator. Um, at the time of filming this, there is no way to see your uh, battery meter in game, so that's kind of annoying. You have to sort of exit game just to see how much battery you have left. But I'm sure a Valve will fix that. Um, they've been adding a lot of. They've had so many updates since the Steam controllers came out, where they add new um, features and uh, are really uh, listening to people's feedback. Now, um, if you go under under the controller section, there's also configurations. Um, and here's where you can really sort of configure, this is how you configure the uh, basic, the uh, default desktop uh, stuff. And you see here you have so many options to choose from. Let me actually move my uh, webcam out of the frame entirely here so that way you can really see everything. Um, but yeah, you can change just about every setting 
Um, this is what makes the controller so versatile and so amazing. It is the options you get are staggering. I cannot talk about them all without this being like a two-hour video. But I'm just gonna sort of glance over the things, um, talk about the things I found uh, most interesting. Like for instance, uh, you see I go to a trackpad and I can change the style of input. Like I can say, okay, when I move the right trackpad, uh, it's a mouse. Move the mouse. Or I can say, okay, no, it's a joystick movement, or it's joystick camera, or it's a scroll wheel. You just have so many options. Um, and you can change things like acceleration, trackball mode, which is where you sort of stop and it may spin for a little bit longer. Um, you can change the uh, friction of the trackball motion. And it's just change what happens when you click down on the um, right trackpad. Change sensitivity, and there's just so much you can change. And then you go under advanced settings, and there's so much more. You can even change it to what happens when you double tap the uh, pad down, and you can even change it to where when you double tap there's a beep. So that is just incredibly, uh, incredibly extensive customization. Some people think it's a little daunting. I agree with that. Um, there's a bit of a learning curve, but it's not too bad. Um, after about, I say after about an hour of configuring uh, this random games, miscellaneous games, I definitely got the hang of it and was able to sort of find what uh, you know what works for me on a variety of games. And there's also this feature called mode shifting, and this is where, okay, when a button is pressed, change what um, the, uh, because I'm in, you know, the right trackpad menu. When a, when I press a button, like say for instance, if I press the left trigger full, if I push it down completely, um, change the right trackpad from being a mouse to a directional pad. Just, you can change stuff like that, and it's so, oh, it's so extensive, and it's so amazing, um, the amount of options you're given. Um, and of course, with the left trackpad, uh, if you change it to, if you assign it to um, directional pad, you can actually uh, turn on required a click. So that way, gliding your finger across the uh, trackpad won't actually count as movement. It's only when you click the trackpad, trackpad down in a direction that it actually executes that. And that can be useful for uh, like platforming games and stuff like that. That's what I find it most useful for. Um, so yeah, I'm going to sort of put this back to what it was. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's just so many options to change. Um, and then right here, this is where you change the gyroscope options. So yeah. And you can also uh, rename uh, options, like uh, rename buttons. For example, um, say, see so yeah, how this says uh, up arrow. What I can do is I can click on this little text box here and uh, change it, name it to whatever the heck I want it to. Um, and yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, changing the binding of a button, you just sort of find, okay, what do I want to change? I want to change what Y does, so I would click on, come in this menu here, uh, go down to the Y button, and then here's where I can select uh, what action to perform when that button is pressed. Um, I can either choose between a key on my keyboard, I can choose um, a mouse button or a mouse wheel, or I can even choose a key from a uh, Xbox 360 controller. Um, so I'll say, okay, I want it to execute Y on an Xbox controller, I just click on that. Uh, so yeah, and of course you can uh, change haptic feedback and stuff like that. Um, it's just really extensive and it works really, really well. Uh, that's what makes the controller so versatile is just Valve did an amazing job uh, really giving you options to let you fine tune however you want. Um, anyway, so yeah, let's just go ahead and jump into a game. Okay, yeah, so here we are with uh, Portal 2. Um, now this game actually came free with my uh, Steam controller, this and Rocket League, so woohoo on that. Um, anyway, yeah, once you're in game, you can hit the uh, Steam logo in the center of the controller and it opens up this, after a little bit of a delay, it opens up this uh, uh, overlay and from here you can hit RB to open your friends list or LB to open the uh, Steam web browser and you can also configure controller um, and one thing I actually forgot to mention is uh, from the uh, bindings menu you can actually hit X and um, this will sort of let you see uh, and you go into community and this will let you see bindings that the community has uploaded and you can actually um, like click A and uh, press A and download these bindings and then um, and then once you and then you can sort of fine tweak them and then when you want you can hit S and uh, save those bindings um, excuse me hit Y and save those bindings um, you can save them privately which is hey just save them locally um, or you can say uh, just save them publicly so that way you can upload them so that other people may use your uh, key bindings um, this is my bindings for Portal 2 nothing special it's just the uh, standard valve uh, default but I got rid of gyroscope because I'm not really a big fan of it. Um, and yeah and also in certain instances where you need to use the keyboard in game like to type something out you just hit open keyboard and this just sort of um, pops the keyboard out 
so that you can uh, make a type of message or something similar to that. Um, but yeah, so this is a good instance to show off why the um, handle buttons are good because I can see walk, jump just like that without having to sort of stop and move my uh, fingers or, or jump without aiming, you know, something like that. You know, I can also press this to sort of grab this right here. Okay, now let's do this. Stop that from moving. There we go. Now we, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and we just gotta sort of get that out of the way. So as you can see, you know, my aiming, um, it's not, uh, it's not as quick, I would say, as my uh, as keyboard and mouse aiming, and it's not as precise either. But it's definitely more precise than uh, it would be with a Xbox 360 controller or a controller very uh, similar to that. Um, I would definitely say it's very good in my experience. So okay, so I'm gonna grab, jump down here, grab this, uh, fly through here. Oh wait, that didn't work exactly how I thought it would. <laughs> um, okay, see, so yeah, I gotta jump down. Oh, woohoo! Okay, and put that there. So as you can see, I am fairly accurate um, and fairly snappy with my aiming. Um, and yeah, and I mean, there you go. It works very well for Portal. Um, Portal is a good example of a game you want to play with the Steam Controller because, you know, it's not really competitive. Um, it's just sort of a laid-back puzzle platform. I mean, things do get pretty intense. And I do find that when I'm in intense situations where I have to sort of aim while uh, shooting, or excuse me, like... Like jump around and I'm bouncing on the pads and I have to hurry up and shoot somewhere quickly. I do notice my aim falters a little bit there, but um, for the most part, you know, it's it's definitely not uh, it's definitely not that much of a disadvantage in my opinion. It does work uh, overall pretty well with the uh, Steam controller. Okay, so this is Counter Strike Global Offensive with the Steam controller. Um, I don't know. My experience with this uh, controller have been in this game have been okay, but overall, I'm not uh, I'm not the uh, too impressed with it. I mean, I do perform better than I would with a uh, Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3 controller, but uh, I don't know. I, I've spent a fair bit of time sort of configuring things and trying to get them uh, sort of a perfect feeling for me, but I don't know. I just haven't really had any luck doing that. Um, but you know, it's, it's definitely still playable. I'm playing online against bots right now. Uh, I would never use a, this controller competitively. Um, I just don't feel like it works good for that. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it's definitely playable. Yeah, and the uh, bindings aren't that bad either. You have a, um, you have this binding for shoot, the, le the right trigger. The uh, left trigger is for reloading. Um, LB changes a, the uh, weapons. Uh, a, uh, this is for the uh, left handle is for walking. A jumps, B reloads as well, and then you also have. The uh, left trackpad click maps to uh, changing weapons. Yeah, you see, my aim is definitely not bad up close, but far away, I sort of, like right there, you can see that I really sort of struggle to sort of get that precise headshot. Um, but overall, you know, it's not awful. It's just not nearly as good as a mouse and keyboard, but better than a controller. So there you go. Yeah, so here's City Skylines with the uh, Steam Controller, and uh, overall the experience uh, playing this game with the Steam Controller is actually very good. Um, yeah, as usual you have the uh, right trackpad here to sort of uh, move the uh, mouse pointer around, and then you know you click that down and sort of move around the right trackpad to sort of rotate the camera. Um, you know, LB and RB are for zooming in and out, works very well. Um, and yeah, you know, if I find it very easy to sort of quickly select some uh, roading like right here and uh, okay I'm gonna put that right here and you know then put it uh, let's see like right right here um, you know and then I want to come over here and uh, put new zoning down I want to zoom in and yeah you know it's very it works very well and it does uh, it's a very fun experience playing the uh, game with this controller and I don't really feel like there's any compromise you know playing this and uh, with the uh, steam controller instead of playing with a uh, mouse and keyboard um, and yeah, this is uh, and this is uh, right click here, and this is left click. Um, yeah, you know, overall, just a very uh, fun experience in my opinion. Um, yeah, I, that's City uh, Skylines. Okay, so here's Skullgirls with the uh, Steam controller, and uh, you know, it's like I expected. It's not the optimal way to play a fighting game um, with the Steam controller. It's just not. It's not going to replace an arcade stick. You know what I mean? 
um, but it's also not really awful you know it all depends on your skill level like I'm not really that good so it's not much of a, a downgrade going from an Xbox controller to a Steam controller um, you can see here I'm sort of doing my movements with the analog stick that's because um, I'm not really comfortable uh, I don't really find it comfortable to play um, this game using the uh, left track pad for movement I don't know it just it just doesn't really feel uh, good enough for me. It's definitely it is smooth, like it is responsive, but I don't know. I just find it difficult to sort of uh, hit the positions I want to. Like if, like I want to do like full circles. Like for instance, like there, I want to do a full circle, right? Um, and I just find that really difficult to do on the uh, trackpad. I don't know. It just doesn't it just doesn't work. Okay, so there we go. So I could sort of do a half, do it right there. There we go. Okay. Uh, so let me give you an example, like I find that like this combo right here for instance, um, you know, really easy on a controller. I'm going to show you guys again. Uh, really easy on a controller, you know. Um, now let's try it on the trackpad here and you see here I, I didn't really land the ultra or the special. I just can't, oh god, it just doesn't really feel, uh, it feels a little rough to sort of move your finger across this and it's kind of, uh, hard to know where your finger is in relation to the uh, pad so yeah it's just yeah it's just not optimal you can if you get used to it I imagine you could get pretty decent with using the trackpad but yeah I don't know um, if you don't mind playing uh, fighting games with an analog stick then it's definitely playable you know um, but yeah I don't know this isn't gonna replace an arcade stick guys okay so this is uh, Shovel Knight uh, on the Steam Controller overall you know Shovel Knight uh, works pretty well on the Steam Controller um, yeah, you know, I feel like for any, uh, especially for platform games, but uh, any game that uses the uh, a sort of simple four-way movement, you know, there's not much diagonals involved. I feel like those games in particular work very well uh, with the uh, sort of left trackpad as a uh, alternative to a D-pad. Um, yeah, I mean, you see here, I have it, uh, I have it set to click, uh, to sort of click down on it to. Uh, actually move around because I do feel like that having that click enabled does make it more um, uh, sort of gives it makes it feel more like a d-pad overall oh. so yeah and I mean if and if you don't like the way the uh, you know the um, left trackpad fills as a d-pad you can just um, use the analog stick you know so yeah that's it makes a decent alternative in my opinion and yeah, you know, I mean, you know, the controller just works very well for uh, simple 2D platformers. Um, yeah, Shovel Knight works great. Okay, so this is Sid Meier's Civilization V with the Steam Controller. Um, yeah, overall, the uh, game works pretty well with the Steam Controller. Uh, you see here we can sort of uh, move around the mouse with the uh, right trackpad. Um, yeah, and this was like the uh, default configuration that was uh, given to me. Uh, I believe it is a community configuration, but anyway, yeah, you left click uh, with the uh, right um, trigger here, and then you sort of right click with the left trigger, so if I want to move a troop, uh, you know, I just sort of hit the uh, left trigger and then just tell them where I want to go, yeah, go there, um, and yeah, you know, I, and it, it's definitely very easy to navigate the interface uh, with the controller, like if I want to come over here and tell the troop to uh, sleep or something like that I can and it, it's very, fairly easy to uh, change between troops like you've seen there um, and yeah overall like everything just works very well in my opinion with the uh, Steam controller we have some other key bindings too like um, the left trackpad up and down are mapped to zoom in and out right on the left trackpad is for uh, tactical view um, and you also have the uh, a couple mappings to XYBA like sleep and rest and stuff like that um, yeah, overall it works very well in my opinion. Um, a very fun experience playing Sid Meier's Civilization V with the Steam Controller. Okay, so this is Terraria with the uh, Steam Controller. And uh, yeah, once again, you know, the controller works very well. Um, you see here, once again, you know, right trackpad is for pointer, uh, left trigger is for um, sort of uh, using items uh, like doors and stuff like that. Uh, left uh, bumper is for jumping. Right bumper is for the grappling hook. Um, you know, right trigger is for attacking, and uh, the two handle buttons are for switching through items in your quick bar. Uh, start. You can open up the inventory. You know, it fills. It's very. Uh, I feel it uh, works very well for the controller. Works very well for sort of moving items around the inventory, making quick 
switches as necessary. And yeah, overall the experience with the controller has uh, just been very positive, especially with this game. Um, I do find myself like when I need to mine down, I do find myself um, sometimes sort of like hitting the wrong block, like I actually meant to get the top parts here. But other than that, uh, you know, I find myself aiming decently well, like I'm aiming for that squirrel right there. And there you go, see, it's not too bad at all, very snappy, uh, very quick. So yeah, Terraria works great. So here we have uh, Project Zomboid with the Steam Controller, and this was a game that um, I'm actually really impressed with how well it runs with the uh, Steam Controller. Yeah, I find myself, um, you know, uh, being very quick with my actions and um, being very precise as well. Um, you see here, you know, right trackpad moves a pointer, I can sort of open my inventory items and move them around uh, very quickly, you know, um, and uh, left uh, trigger here is sort of how I aim and right trigger is how I attack so I can aim and attack like that left bumper and right bumper are for zooming in and out um, the uh, left handle is for pushing away right handle is for sprinting um, and yeah it just works very well um, and then of course there are some things mapped to the um, uh, left trackpad here like opening up the hiding and showing the inventory and opening up the uh, tabs over here for things like health and info and skills and stuff like that I um, mean, yeah, you know, I'm going to sort of go in and uh, open a door here. See, so just hit, point out and hit that because this is a uh, left click here. And yeah, just close that, uh, you know, go into the refrigerator here, uh, sort of move this to my inventory. Sort of, uh, where's the strawberries at? <coughs> um, there they are. See, right click, eat all, and yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I was really surprised how well this game worked with the Steam Controller. I would definitely say it's a... Uh, enjoyable experience and whenever I play this game I actually play it with the Steam Controller because it's just a bit more comfortable than playing with a mouse and keyboard. So yeah that's uh, Project Zomboid. Works great. So this is Besiege with the Steam Controller and uh, yeah it uh, works pretty good you know I just sort of um, this is how I uh, right click so I can sort of rotate this is left click uh, these bumpers are for the uh, left and right buffers are for zooming in and out um, and yeah I mean it's just uh, see here I can sort of move around very quickly of course this is how you move around the camera right here um, See, this is how you sort of click and drag by pressing in the uh, right bumper and then sort of just moving it okay so let's see here let's just build a simple little car here nothing fancy Um, okay, do this, so you see here I'm not really making any mistakes, um, my clicking is very accurate and I'm very quick, um, and it just works really well. So once we get this finished here, come up here, start, and the uh, your robots, as this game refers to them, is moved by the uh, uh, left trackpad here. Oh, I didn't really build this good, but yeah, there you go. You can see it works pretty well. And, uh, and if we open the Steam Overlay, you can um, see the bindings for things like the uh, piston and grabber and all that stuff is mapped to the buttons. Um, and you also have the rope winch in and out sort of mapped to the uh, uh, handle buttons here. And uh, I think that it, this is another example of a game I would actually kind of like prefer playing with the Steam Controller as uh, it's much more comfortable than playing with a mouse and keyboard um, in my opinion, you know. Um, you know, I just find it a lot better to hit this button to do a function instead of having to sort of hover over my keyboard and hit two buttons at once and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, you know, works very, very well. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys something a little different. Um, I'm going to show you guys uh, uh, running a uh, non-Steam game with the Steam controller. Now, what you're going to want to do is, if you want to do this, you're going to want to uh, have Steam Big Picture Mode open. You're going to want to go to the gear icon up here and then go to uh, controller configurations, desktop configuration. Now, the desktop configuration is basically what the uh, sort of configuration will be for the controller, what the controller will be detected as um, when you're running the game just on the desktop. So I'm going to go into desktop configuration here. And as this is the defaults for the uh, desktop, it's just uh, set to sort of emulate the mouse and you have page up and things like that on the uh, controller. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit Y to save as 
and then you know you just gonna go ahead and save this private so that way when you want to get back to this binding you can um, and then once you've saved it we're gonna hit X here we're gonna go down to templates and we're just gonna hit gamepad and what this will do is this will say okay the when I'm in my desktop and I have the Steam controller plugged in and Steam is running uh, see the controller as an Xbox 360 controller for the desktop um, and what that means is when you launch a, a non-Steam application it will actually read the Steam controller and read all the inputs as a uh, Xbox 360's inputs um, so yeah very nifty and of course if you want to you know maybe I don't know you want to run old school Doom um, in DOSBox with this you can just sort of configure this like you would with any other application and once you're done configuring, configuring it you can hit Y, save as, uh, name it, um, give it a description and just stuff like that and then you can hit X, go to personal and then load up that configuration see here here's the default configuration we saved earlier you know so we can easily get back to that um, but yeah anyway I'm gonna sort of switch workplaces here and I'm going to launch um, Indie Visible the prototype and you can see here once the game loads up I'm gonna skip through all this stuff um, and it's gonna ask us for key bindings and you're gonna see uh, see here every button is detected it um, it sees all the uh, buttons as the uh, Xbox 360 input like you see here everything works perfectly fine yeah so yeah there you go um, and that's just sort of how you uh, get non-steam games to uh, recognize the steam controller and of course I've heard some people say you can get like Minecraft and stuff running I haven't really tested it with a game like that um, but yeah you know it works great for uh, non-steam games um, yeah so that has been my review of the steam controller overall I would definitely recommend this product if you're trying to play uh, PC games comfortably at your uh, chair or at your couch or whatever maybe you've got a big screen and you want to play those games um, in your living room or something this is definitely a great product for that um, a lot of people say okay well, why don't I just take my Xbox 360 controller or PS4 controller and use a program like X Patter to map uh, keyboard and mouse buttons to my PS4 controller that'll work just as good right no the, the amount of precision you get with the Steam controller is vastly superior to sort of emulating software um, that you would use regularly for that sort of thing. Like I used to use X Powder um, for my uh, Xbox 360 controller when I was in Windows and yeah it just doesn't work nearly as well as the uh, Steam controller does. It just has fantastic precision and it has no latency, at least in my experience I haven't noticed any latency at all. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend this product. Um, it was about 60 US dollars for me, 50 for the controller itself, and 10 for shipping. That's about the same price range as a PS4 or Xbox One controller. And yeah, I would definitely recommend this product over them any day for a PC gamer. Um, so yeah, this has been my review of the Steam Controller. This is Keith here. Uh, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, make sure to give it a thumbs down. Um, if you felt like I missed a game, maybe you want to see me play a game that I have in my library. Um, with the Steam controller, just go ahead and leave a comment below. Um, or if you have just any other suggestions, you know, just leave them below. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys.